This is the University of Wisconsin's Primate Research Laboratory. Here, scientists are working to unravel the behavior of lower primates, monkeys, in order to gain more understanding of the most complicated primate of them all, man. Dr. Harlow, whatever led you to pick love as a research study? Well, for countless decades, scientists have been studying every evil animal and human motive that exists. A hunger, thirst, pain, fear, hatred, and uh, sex in its least enchanting aspects. We thought that some scientists should study decent human motives, love and affection. Undoubtedly, the most dramatic is this situation we call total social isolation, where the baby is taken away from its mother within a few hours after birth and then placed in a chamber. We can see it here. It's a stainless steel chamber in which it sees no other monkey. It sees no human being. Indeed, it sees no animal for some period of time. Uh, in our cases, usually three, six, or 12 months. Now, this is a baby monkey that's been in total social isolation for six months. The forward screen has just been raised. The camera's upon it. You can see the enormous uh, disturbance and distress. Uh, this pattern you see is a fascinating pattern of self-clutch because this is frequently seen in human children that have shown severe maternal deprivation and it's called an autistic uh, uh, pattern. Here you can see the front panel, the experimenter's viewing panel being raised. Here is a baby that has been in 12 months total social isolation. For the, this is the first moment it's seen the outside world. And of course, it's in a state of just utter panic. Almost catatonic. This is almost a catatonic-like uh, uh, posture. It's the extreme example of this autistic uh, posture that we described. What's the chance of uh, this monkey, for instance, uh, ever recovering? Well, what we found is that our monkeys, after three months total social isolation, if we then give them a chance to socially interact, uh, in a rather short period of time, they do recover and they become socially normal. Our monkeys that have been in total social isolation for six months, the prognosis is extremely unfavorable. Uh, they won't react effectively with their age mates, their sex lives. For the males, their sex lives are just obliterated. For the females, are uh, enormously uh, damaged. Uh, the, the 12 months social isolation there's nothing left. And we are convinced that there's nothing that probably can ever be regained by any kind of therapeutic measure you might take. The playpen is one of our standard test situations. It's a wonderful way to measure the development of infant infant affection. We say it's so important. Here we can have a group of four or eight animals, and if you let them uh, stay together, they automatically play. There's nothing mysterious about play. If baby infants have a chance to interact with other infants, they just naturally play effectively. And we're convinced that play is a basic mechanism that leads to infant-infant affection. Now, these uh, monkeys here are about a year of age, and because of this, their play is a little rough. But even so, you see that the normal monkeys don't hurt each other. By the way, the male monkeys play rougher than the female monkeys. No matter what you may have learned in college, this is innate. Little boys are naturally rough, and little girls are born ladies, though some of them rise above it. True human analogs. That is correct. But here is a six-month isolate animal placed in this social situation, so he has a chance to interact with these normal animals Instead, he goes first in this autistic posture, then he follows along the wall. He's doing everything he can to keep away, you see, from the uh, normal animals. Makes no attempt to form affectionate relationships with age mates. Uh, the normal animals are playing with physical objects. They're playing with each other. And the socialists are just staying away and staying alone. He's just sitting hunched up in this autistic posture. One of these normal monkeys comes down and tries to play. He won't feed back. The normal monkey then even abuses him. He makes no attempt to fight back. Uh, socially, he is simply uh, lost. Doctor, what about when they grow up? Do they ever make any sort of a uh, recovery? Uh, well, these animals with long periods of 
social isolation. Uh, when they grow up, the first place they never are able to interact in a friendly way with each other. They don't develop what we call age-made affection. Second place, we've already indicated the, the heterosexual lives are either destroyed or else just enormously crippled. And uh, uh, perhaps even more surprising, where we have by artificial means impregnated females belonging to this class, even their maternal behaviors are entirely absent. In the first place, we have films showing uh, a normal uh, monkey-child relationships. And you can see that uh, these are warm relationships where the monkey mother gives the baby a great deal of intimate bodily contact. You can see the mother is protecting the baby and the baby feels extremely secure in the mother's presence. Even though it's being photographed, yeah, I think it was threatening the photographer there. Just, But this one, the primary functions of the mother to instill a sense of security in the baby and the normal mother does this very well. Here you can see the baby clinging to the ventral surface of the uh, mother, the mother going about its business, but... Uh, she never lets him very far away, does she? Uh, well, this is true for the first three months. And, uh, however, the monkey mother is a very wise mother, and after about three months, she not only lets the baby go away, but she even encourages him to go away. And you see, this enables him to interact with the uh, world about him, to explore and also to play with other babies. And this is really an important function of motherhood at a particular uh, stage. So if this baby were a year of age, uh, you'd see the baby leaving the mother and going out and playing with other babies. Anytime he was afraid, we'd rush back to the mother for protection, but... Uh, That's analogous to uh, human behavior, uh, isn't this it? This is analogous to human behavior and is an important point in relation to human behavior. Now, this is one of our so-called motherless mothers. Now, this mother never had a mother of its own, but even more important, it never had a chance to form affection with other infants early in life. It was artificially impregnated. You can see it has absolutely no maternal feeling for its infant whatsoever. Part of the most striking thing here is that no matter what this motherless mother does, the baby keeps coming back and back and back. The, the power of the affection of the infant for the mother is simply unbelievable. The mother can beat this baby to the point of insensibility. The baby keeps coming back. I think that uh, this should cheer any parent to realize how strong the feelings of their babies for them really are. You can also realize if you have to punish your baby, he'll still continue to love you. What will happen to this baby, Doctor? Will it be uh, normal when it grows up? Well, this is one baby of a group of four, all raised by these terribly evil mothers. But they had a chance to also play together. And uh, the rather surprising thing was that in spite of evil mothering, they turned out to be very normal babies. They were a little slow to develop affection for their age mates, but in six months they appeared perfectly normal. Uh, uh, heterosexually, they made very effective adjustments. None of them have yet been old enough to be mothers, but our prediction is that they're going to be very effective mothers. It was a very striking illustration of the power of infant-infant affection to compensate for what was just obviously very evil, not only inadequate, but just evil mothering. One of our situations is one in which we have raised babies from birth on with no mothers whatsoever. Now, these are babies that have mothers most of the day, uh, and they're in our playroom. You can see that they play even though they're very young. They're playing effectively. Uh, they're playing somewhat independently. They're not uh, closely bound to each other. And uh, at this early age, this is just very good, normal play by babies that had mothers. But here are four babies that never had any mother of their own. The only mother that they have is the, the other baby's a substitute mother. They're in the same playroom, and as you can see, they are in this, we call it together-together pattern. This greatly interferes with play behavior. 
Uh, even so, you will see, uh, even at this age, one brave youngster going out and playing. And by the time this group was a year of age, all of them had shown some play behavior. And we really thought that these animals would perhaps never be normal. However, even though they had no mothers at all, uh, they are now heterosexually normal. Uh, whether they are not, they'll be maternally and paternally normal. We just don't know. But again, it's a remarkable illustration, first, that even just a little affection for other infants goes a long way. You don't have to have love 24 hours a day. One hour a day is enough. And also a wonderful illustration of the power of infant-infant affection to compensate for inadequate mothering. And there's no more inadequate mothering than none at all. That's a brave youngster. What do you think your researches mean in terms of good mothering for human infants? Well, I think that our, our monkey mothers show that there are really two stages of good mothering. Uh, the first stage is a stage of total loving care. And for the monkey, this goes about three months. And for the human being, this certainly goes for one year and perhaps more. However, uh, good mothering at the first stage does not constitute good mothering at the second stage. The second stage is a stage where the mother must gradually, psychologically, and physically emancipate the baby from herself so that the baby can go out and develop this all-important infant-infant affectional systems. And actually have human mothers that are extremely good mothers at stage one, never progress beyond it. They leave their children tied to their apron strings and socially destroyed. So I think one thing that our data show that there really are these two uh, stages of mothering. And good mothering is different at stage one and different at stage two. What about children who are institutionalized and, in effect, uh, receiving some sort of social deprivation? Well, I think that our data are really, in a broad way, are quite in keeping with the uh, data of the founding home. Uh, if you're willing to accept the idea that monkeys grow up four times as fast as the human child, like our totally socially deprived three months old babies, they're socially rehabilitatable. I think in the uh, human children, the founding homes, uh, they found out that if you can get the child, you'd like to get the child out as soon as possible. If the child can go into a normal human social environment in the first year, he's socially recoverable. Our six months isolates, the prognosis is unfavorable. Our children that are kept in the founding home for two years, the prognosis is by no means really favorable. Children that must be kept in the founding home for four years, like our one-year-old socially isolated monkeys, the prognosis becomes extremely unfavorable. So that our experimental data simply gives strong support to what has already been known on a clinical basis, uh, that uh, no founding home is a substitute for a human home. The sooner the child can be taken from the founding home, and put into human home, the better.